Good evening, everyone. Welcome to High Life. This is our crossover uh, service. And just like that, we've come to the end of 2022. You know, we've been doing um, a review of the year in the last few weeks and, you know, going back over some of the things that the Lord has told us. Um, you know, we, we talked about having, uh, you know, him giving us direction and him, him also giving us equipment. And, you know, it, it's a year that seems to have gone by so quickly. And, and I, I believe that there's a lot of anticipation for for 2023 but you know before we focus our attention on the next year we should just say a word of prayer and give the lord thanks because it really is uh grace that we've been able to to come this far and to see this point in the year and to be looking ahead with expectation and and and, and joy and and hope for, for for the seasons to come there are many people that have not had the privilege of um, entering in and experiencing the things that, that the Lord has in store for us um, in 2023. So let's just pray for a moment. Our Heavenly Father, we just honor you. We give you thanks. We give you praise. We recognize that, that you are indeed our gracious, loving Father uh, and our King. And we just, we just bow down in reverence before you, O God. For there are many seasons within the last uh, year. There are many highs and lows, many uh, 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 times of difficulty, my God, but yet here we are. You have been faithful once again. We can look back um, and, and, and know that you came through for us every time that, that, that we needed you to, and so that we can advance with the same confidence that, that you are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. You are the God that says you will never leave us nor forsake us. You will not relax your hold on us, O oh God. You will not give us up. And so, Father, we just thank you this evening as we prepare to cross over into 2023. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have prepared for us in the year to come. We thank you, Lord, for all the work you've done in our hearts. You know, this year was the year of the kingdom builders, and, and we thought it was about building, but really you were building in us, oh God. And we just acknowledge all that you have done. We acknowledge the way that you have purified our hearts and refined our hearts and given us capacity to be able to hold that which is coming uh, uh, in the year ahead. So we just honor you, O oh God. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so I'm here to, today with uh, Koi Sola and with Chalia. Um, and, you know, as, as we've gone through the year, you know, we've really just, um, I, I believe we've become closer, we've, we've formed deeper bonds, we've, we've gotten more accustomed to sharing our hearts. And that's, increasingly the culture of this community and you know we know that the Lord doesn't only speak through one person at the front or um, you know we all have the capacity to engage with him and to and to and to hear him and our language may be different the way we, we, we articulate that which we're sensing from the Lord but the transmission from the Spirit of God is the same so we just wanted to you know as we prepare for you know the word that that pastor has uh, from the Lord for 2023 to just, um, you know, to just speak with with one another um, and, and just uh, uh, hear from other members of, of this body of ours um, what they're sensing from the Lord uh, uh, for, for the year ahead. You know, a um, couple of defining scriptures for us in this season, uh, the last few years, probably since uh, COVID, you know, the things that the Lord said to us before 2020, we, we couldn't situate them in the context of a global lockdown. But now that we've gone through that, um, we have a greater appreciation for these scriptures. So I'm going to read uh, Isaiah 42, verse 16, uh, and Isaiah 43, verse 19, both of them in the Passion Translation. Isaiah 42, 16 says, I will walk the blind by an unknown way and guide them on paths they've never traveled. I will smooth their difficult road and make their dark mysteries bright with light. These are, the, these are things that I will do for them. For I will never abandon my beloved ones. Mm -hmm. And I think we can say that that scripture probably means more to us today than it did three years ago because so much has changed. Isaiah 43 verse 19 says, I'm doing something brand new, something unheard of. Even now, it sprouts and grows and matures. Don't you perceive it? I will make a, a way in the wilderness and open up flowing streams in the desert. You know, both those verses really speak about coming into something completely different from what we've been accustomed to. 
um, and really having to lean on, on the Lord and be led by him in order to be able to navigate uh, the seasons that are, that, that are ahead of us. So um, with that in mind, you know, I just want to uh, hear from Koinsola and from Chalia uh, just what, what uh, has been key for them in this year and what they're sensing the Lord is, is saying um, for, for 2023, whether it be for high life as a community, whether it be for the body as a whole, whether it be for the nation, whatever it is that you're sensing. Koinsola. All right. Thank you, Pastor Reilly. Hello, Chalia. Um, uh, for me, um, so in the past, I've always been someone um, who can be very, um, you know, organized. Um, you know, all the, it's coming to the end of the year, yeah. you have your goals, yeah. and then you segment them, um, health, spiritual, <laughs> financial, <laughs> family, and then you have everything broken down into steps. You know how they say that yeah. um, a goal not written down is just a wish, and then you have it block by block. And I'd always been, you know, that kind of person, and I, I, I could swear by the authenticity of that um, game true. plan, yeah. yeah. And then at the end of the year, you sit down, and then you review and say, uh -huh, yes, this one, oh no, but this one didn't. Work. But in the last couple of years, just like you said, um, God has been, um, you know, redirecting the way. And I, I, I used to put a lot of pressure sometimes on my husband because my husband used to be, you know, the we're just going with yeah. the flow kind of person. I'll be like, Have you written your goals? <laughs> You've not written goals. I mean, will you, a goal that is not set cannot be achieved, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. And um, but in the last two or three years, I've seen that as I matured in God and as I grew in my work with him, that had kind of like taken a back burner mm -hmm. and I'm now more in tune with, you know, working with him mm -hmm. um, as he directs. And, and, you know, when this came, I, I was thinking to myself like, okay, really, what is God saying for 2023 and all that? And as I sat with him, you know, just to incline my ear more to what the Holy Spirit was saying, I just felt in my heart like, God is saying, I mean, you made a bit of a reference to that earlier when you're like, okay, it's not just about the person at the forefront, everybody, that God has something for everyone, regardless of um, the position you are, because everybody's at a different um, le stage in their walk with God and different levels of maturity. And um, I feel you should just realize that uh, if you're like me and you're that kind of person that you feel like, okay, I don't have it all put together. I've not heard anything mm -hmm. concrete that, okay, God's saying that this is my year of breakthrough, <laughs> you know, or this is my year. I, I think it's okay. Um, the most important thing, and, and this I heard resonated um, so much in my spirit as I leaned into the Holy Spirit was, you know, where, where it says that um, Galatians 5.25, that since we're living by the Spirit, we must move in the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And I like the Passion Translation that says walk in step with the Spirit. So it's mm -hmm. going to be a year where um, you're going to need to lean into him so much that mm. it's going to be like he's holding your hand as he takes a step. You take, you would not know what the next step is yeah. going to be. And it's okay if you've already heard something mm -hmm. that this is what is going to be, and that's fine. It's um, go, it's a buffet. Everybody yeah. has something. Yeah. So regardless, of, so if you're like me right now that you feel like, okay, you've not heard anything concrete, the Holy Spirit is saying, lean into me. Mm. Just rely on me. Whatever you need part-time, as long as you're in me yeah. and you're working in step with me, what you need at that time will come to you. Yeah. But you just need to be very, very in tune yeah. with him. And, you know, just like you, you, you read the scripture, I'd actually, when you read that, I was really, um, you know, moved because I had shared it earlier backstage okay. with um, Charlie about, you know, he said, he's, he's walking us down an unfamiliar path. Yeah. You're still going to go down the unfamiliar path. Yeah. You're not going to know what's going to happen per se, but it's very essential that you remain in step with him and you re abide in him and you remain in him mm -hmm. and then you're constantly in tune with him your frequency must be aligned with that of the holy spirit so that you know what to do when to do it how to do it with whom to do it yeah yeah thank you yes i mean you know something that the lord certainly said to me during the course of this season and when i say that i'm referring to sort of post 2020 onwards 
was that he was creating a culture of dependency. He wanted a culture of mm -hmm. dependency. You know, we can all depend on the Lord when we're in a crisis. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? When something is like going terribly wrong and we genuinely have no clue what to do. You will see us like no other. We'll be on our faces, Lord, you know, crying out. But that's not necessarily a culture of dependency. We, mm. we go to him like that. We're dependent because we really are in an emergency. But a culture of dependency is like, this is how I live my life. Mm. It's my culture mm. on a day-to-day, -day, whether I, I have plenty or I have little, whether I am familiar with the environment or unfamiliar. Mm. I, I have this culture mm. of inquiring. And we see that you know, with David, and we've referred to that, I think, at different times during the course of this year that even though he fought the Philistines and beat them last week, hmm. he will ask God again, first of all, should I even fight them? And two, how should I fight them? You know, because he had that culture of dependency. Um, so you know, in, in line with what you're saying, it's like if the Lord um, establishes us in that, then we have what we need to get through the year because, because we are always looking at him. Um, Chalia. <laughs> Thank you so much, um, um, Sparkle, for your beautiful, um, you know, uh, contribution on that aspect of, you know, working with God on familiar paths and all of that. For me, I've been in a mood of, um, you know, it's led me to a mood of gratitude and thanksgiving. And the Holy Spirit just, so, you know how something just, you know, drops in your spirit. And I just heard the, the Holy Spirit say, You've not thanked me for the, the, the permanence of my indwelling presence in your life. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I was like, okay, <laughs> the permanence of my indwelling presence in your life. Mm -hmm. you've, you, you've thanked me for all, all lots of stuff, mm -hmm. business, growth, this, that, that. And, and I started thanking him that, wow, it means that I'm living with you, I'm living in you. And as I thanked him for that, he said, throw more light. Mm. Uh, do you know what it means to have me permanently living in you? Mm. So he now took me to Old Testament. Uh, you know, normally I don't go towards the mosaic um, chapters, like, <laughs> you know, Genesis, Exodus. And mm -hmm. I would like to go to Isaiah, David, you know, favorite Daniel and all those parts. But he took me towards that. And it's amazing how the Holy Spirit can just take you to a place you've never really looked at. Mm. And he, guess where he took me to? While I was thanking him, he said, what, what am I thanking him for? What do I see myself as representing? I said, the temple of God. Mm -hmm. He said, he now took me back to what was in the temple of God in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. and, and, and when I went through the verses, I noticed that there was, this, um, there was the, the law of God, the Ten Commandments and the Mosaic law, the even the vase of um, the jar of manna mm -hmm. and um, the, the board, the, Aaron, the, 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 rod. the rod of Aaron. Mm -hmm. And he said before they had to wait for a particular day to gather and be read, mm -hmm. you know, publicly the priest would read, read all that. But now he has put our, his laws on our hearts. Mm -hmm. I should thank him for that. I told him thank you for that. It said the jar of, um, of manna was sort of provisions mm -hmm. that he put that there to continually remind the children of Israel that he is their, you know, the, 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 the Jehovah Jireh, their constant provider. Mm -hmm. Provi he provides them their protection, their health, their, their, their direction, everything. And he was like, that's what I've been to you. Mm -hmm. I sustain you. The whole Psalm 23, it's all about what, mm -hmm. I, I, what I provide for you. And spiritually, emotionally, name it. I started going deeper into mm -hmm. Thanksgiving. See how the correlation is coming as he was walking me down the path, on familiar path, like you said. <laughs> you know, so I thanked him for that. And then I was wondering how he was going to relate the, the board of Aaron to me, you know, to the you know, re reality of you know, Christian mm -hmm. living. And that's the part that really struck me. He said, I should go and read how that um, rod came about. And so I went, I read up number 17, 1 to 11. And it was obvious that there was a complaint and murmuring amongst the children mm -hmm. of Israel mm -hmm. about whether God had really chosen Aaron. Mm -hmm. And in order to, to, God knew he had chosen Aaron. Mm -hmm. Moses knew he had chosen Aaron. Aaron
Simon had maybe some 30, 40 percent idea that I may have been chosen. But because maybe he had done this, built the calf, he had fallen out of favor, he wasn't too sure himself. So but let's say he had 30, 40 percent. So God said, if you noticed, the law was for everyone. OK, the jar provision I provide for everyone. But the rod, the, blue, the, the, the rod of Aaron, the miracle that happened that made it bored was to honor Aaron and to let people know that I have chosen Aaron. Mm. And so they put Aaron, um, the 12 tribes of, of um, um, Israel brought out their rod and they put it in the presence of God. Moses left it and overnight. Mm. Moses said the, uh, the, the rod that buds and mm. sprouts and all of that. I love that word that you use, sprouts. Uh -huh. there. It just hit me that I was on the right track. <laughs> and the next day, of course, Aaron's rod had sprouted, had budded, it had blossomed, and it had produced almonds. And God told me clearly that this 2023, that's the way I, I saw it clearly in my spirit, is the year for the chosen, the matured sons of God to bud, to blossom, to be backed up by real miracles. And it, it, the way he put it, it was like, listen, you've been calling this year the year of the kingdom builders. And when really was open, you know, praying during the opening prayer, she was saying something about the Lord has taught us it, the, the kingdom building has not been building a, a, a structure, oh, yeah. but building within. He said what he has been doing mm. is to build the kingdom builders. And he just doesn't want any kind of person building his kingdom mm. because they will not get the specification mm. that he has been building. This has been us. So this year has been training us, working mm -hmm. on us, working on sons of God. Whether you are in high life, you are out of it, but mm -hmm. it has been for the kingdom builders, really. Mm -hmm. Those he has chosen. And I was talking to really, you know, that we were talking about um, dollars and all of that backstage. And he was trying to say for high life. Now, I'm going to mix it up. Mm -hmm. For high life, he, he was trying to say that this is the year for picking out the 300, mm -hmm. so to say. Okay. Um, you know, and just, he just sort of just told me that, okay, we, he has, this is your selecting and whoever he selects is going to back them up with miracles. Amen. Okay. Amen. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You know, um, it's amazing also how, you know, when we share like this, um, when we, we sort of draw out common themes um, that, that reassure us, actually. You know, we always say the spirit is one, um, but you know, when, when, when we're speaking, if we're speaking what he has told us, we can, we can see synergy um, in, in what everybody is saying. Uh, you know, I, I, I think that in the last few years, they felt like transitional years mm. to me. You know, there was, there was like, we left something, but we are yet to enter into the next thing. Mm. It's almost like we've been detoxed. Um, you know, the Lord has sort of shaken off some things. He has, you know, introduced some things, fortified us with some things, you know, so it's really been like a, um, a transitional period it's almost like taking a gap year like yeah. you know when you finish your a levels you think okay i'm going to take a gap year before i go to you know the yeah. university or the next stage that's kind of how this season has felt mm. 2023 is like a year of liftoff mm. you know the many things that he's been saying to us are like touching down in a very real way mm -hmm. in order that we can lift off it's like the rubber is meeting the road now okay guys i've given you all of the training and the this and that of course there will always be training but it's a time of boots on the ground of yeah. manifestation of of actualizing can i quickly come in there the the boots on the ground mm. you know it's so real because the lord has been trying to say if you remember the the story of you know cutting down the 32,000 to 300 mm -hmm. he said i'm going to advance with this 300 mm. okay the others can later he could he called in for yes. the rest of the israelites to join but he said these are the 300 I need to advance on. Mm. So boots on the ground. The, 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 he, God is doing what, what I call pruning. He's not interested in quantity. Mm. He wants the quality of a thing. And the boots on the ground are those he's going to use as his um, soldiers. Mm. Yeah. Well, we're not saying high life is supposed to like, be raising an army mm. you know, yes. to build. And that army has gone through training. Mm -hmm. We are in, we, you know, we are yeah. part of God's army. Mm -hmm. We've gone through, through that training. And next year, that lifts. 
So, so, but the part I am sure of that's going to happen next year is there's going to be manifestations. Yes. That means whatever we decide, what is, give, is releasing authority, mm -hmm. signs and wonders are going to follow mm -hmm. us. I heard it clear. God is like, you are going to be my chosen. Whether you want to part the sea or not, I've chosen you. You're going to part the sea. Mm -hmm. Things are going to happen. Mm -hmm. And I need to just point that out. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, thank you very much for um, both of your contributions. Uh, I, I hope that um, you know, they've added uh, more color to what you're sensing the Lord is saying um, for you uh, in, 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 and for us indeed in 2023. One key theme of 2022 was community. Mm. Um, we talked about identifying as we. And, and there's a we that, that, will come, that has come together that will advance uh, in the purposes of God just to be the arrowhead. You know, as Charlie pointed out, the Lord used the 300, but then it was, the victory was for all of Israel. Mm -hmm. So the victory is for the body, but he will use those that he has called to be the tip of the arrow to break through uh, and, and to, to begin to demonstrate and manifest his purposes that are very different from what we knew before mm. um, and so the culture of dependency the, the, the being uh, one with him so that we can hear his voice clearly and follow the instructions even when we don't fully understand is going to be critical for our uh, a purposeful and accurate advancement in 2023 okay well i hope that's been a, a blessing to you and thank you very much hello everyone um, it's great to be here again um, we're just here to follow on with um, what was just shared by the last group, um, just really sharing about um, what we're all getting and what we've all been getting and what we feel the Holy Spirit has been dropping in our hearts as we come to the end of this year, but also to prepare us for next year, what we feel the Lord is saying to us about next year. So um, before we start, I'd just like us to just say a short prayer. Father Lord, we just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for this time of the year. Thank you that we've made it to the end of the year. Thank you for all the things that you've been doing for us throughout this year. We also want to say thank you to all those who've been blessed and who have listened to the teachings throughout the year from January 1st or the last year's message into January 1st. You are the Kingdom Builders through Perusia, through the teachings and the equipping series that have gone throughout the year. Holy Spirit, we just acknowledge your presence throughout this year in our community um, in the lives of everyone that um, is part of our community and in their families, their respective families. Holy Spirit, we also ask that you would continue to do what only you can do, that what you have begun in 2022, you will continue and bring to fulfillment in 2023. In Jesus' name, amen, amen and amen and amen. So yeah, thank you everyone. So today I've got Shayi Boya with me and I've got Sandra Barnabas with me and um, we just really want to share what we feel the Lord um, is just saying to us and really bringing in terms of just converging at the end of this year leading into the beginning of 2023. Personally, I, st I still feel a lot can go down between now and um, 12 a.m. Um, on the 1st of January 2023. Um, so. I'm just going to open the floor immediately um, to just what we feel we've been sharing. But before I just open the floor, I just remember just to say one thing quickly. A lot has happened in 2022. Um, I believe there's just so much that has happened um, in my own personal life, um, in the life of our community, high life community. Um, I mean, for one, we got Macbeth back and, um, you know, who's working with us behind the screen. I know, I'm sure he's super uncomfortable by this, but hey, you know, him and Peter are doing their thing. And, you know, so thank you very much for being part of the community again. Um, he can't edit that out, so that's going to stay. So that's very good. But I'm also, you know, just everything that's been happening with High Life, you know, just thanking everyone, Peter in the background, the media team and, you know, social media communications, you know, Sandra, Shay, and all the people that kind of make everything work in the background, you know, just wanted to say thank you to all of you. Um, also, thank you to the leadership, you know, um, Dr. Carlton Williams, you know, um, he's been going on this fantastic journey this year, and we are blessed to be working alongside him and literally walking alongside him. Um, in spite of all the challenges he's facing, but you know, he's listening out to what the Lord is doing. Also want to say thank you to our beloved Pastor Aurelia Deshino. Lord, we just want to we, we just want to say thank you for all the things that you do for the community and for everyone. 
And also, I'd like to thank myself. <laughs> yeah, Daniel, thank you. But yeah, thank you to all the members of our community in all the house churches, those that were, have been part of the community to date, those that have moved on to other pastures, to those that are just coming in. We just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Without you, High Life Community would not be what it is. So without further ado, who would like to go first? Uh, thank you, Daniel. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, um, yeah, 2022 has been great. It's been, it's been awesome. Um, but um, just to keep it brief, so I know that uh, God has been sharing and just hinting a few things to me about 2023 and the years ahead. And um, I was just saying to Daniel earlier that unlike other years, you know, I just wait till December and I'm like, Lord, what's your plan for, you know, the next year? And it just okay, gives me a hint and this is what it is. But it was just really different this time around. And that's because, firstly, he made it known that we've already, it's funny how all the years coming to an end and we've already stepped into a new season, even, even before entering um, the new year, you know, and... Just looking at everything he, over the past month, he has just been talking about obedience. He has been talking to me about collaboration, stillness, and a few things. So just to to give more insight, he, he has made it known that um, in this new season, unlike other times where we just want God to tell us exactly what it is and just run with it, I heard Queen Salah sharing this earlier and it just made sense to me. He's taking us through, he's just taking us by the hand and he wants to just take us step by step, every step of the way. You know, um, we're not obliged to know exactly what the next step will be. He just, he's, I think he's just trying to, to, to increase our trust level and for us to be totally dependent on him. So he's just, he has made it known that he's just taking us by the hand and he's just going to lead us through even unfamiliar, especially rather unfamiliar parts, you know. So we just need to learn to lean and rest, you know. And um, secondly, this came in 2020, but it was just, he brought it back to me a few weeks ago, how in this, in 2023 and the years I had, He's releasing, or rather he has, you know, giving out keys. And he's not just giving it to anyone. He's only giving it to a select few. He's giving it to um, <clears throat> matured sons. And why I would say matured son is because, <laughs> like the message version will say, this doggy dog out there. So <laughs> it's, not just, it's not just giving it to anyone because there are already people manning those, uh, the, the gates that those keys belong to. You know, and those people, they don't just respond to anybody, you know. So he has made it clear that he's just he's giving it to matured sons and he, he trusts that these people will, as he speaks, these people just listen, they obey, and they just walk according to what he's showing them and just, you know, the way he's directing them, they're just following his path. And he, he referenced David and Jesus, you know, that... David, why David is because David had this habit of always running back to God, no matter what has happened, good or bad. He just had this habit of running back and just staying where God would have him be. And Jesus, because Jesus had this principle of, I only do what I see my father do, you know. So those, that, those are the people that he will have us just live by because of the way they chose to live their lives way back then, you know. So that's why he has made it clear that, I mean, these keys that he's given, is not just handing it over to anyone. He's giving it to people that he knows that will listen to him. And um, thirdly, he spoke about collaborations. Um, in 2023, there are a lot of churches and, let me, let me not say churches, I would say ministries rather. There are ministries and businesses that... God has been growing over the past years and he's going to make, um, they're going to get really visible from 2023. And 
you know, we we'll think that why will collaboration be in line with this? So he's he's grooming. Um, these people have learned to work not just by themselves. You know, he's making it. He's he's making collaboration a big deal because the world system has taught us to compete rather than work together. You know. So there are some people that have stayed in a place where God has been able to prune them. He has worked on them. So when he tells them to work with someone else, he knows that this set will respond to, to them, to, to his voice rather. And he, he's having this set of people collaborate either with each other or whoever is going to raise at this time to collaborate with. And where were the times that we're in, um, collaboration will, 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 will take us farther than we've ever gone. Um, it is not a time to walk alone. You, you, in fact, I will not advise anybody to walk alone. It is not a time to walk alone. It's a time to collaborate with people of like minds, um, businesses especially, um, people in the marketplace. He wants people to work together. He doesn't want he doesn't want people in the same industry, or the same sector, to see themselves as competition actually because there's room for everyone the world system has taught us that you have to be the best you know just be the top and the plan is not to just to be the best it's to just to thrive and do whatever you have to do or rather what god has called you to do rather than trying to take down someone so that's why it's one of the reasons why he's highlighting collaboration trying to get people to work together and in, i think in the nearest future it's going to to it's going to be needed in the nearest future where we're going to Christians, organizations, people, Christians in the marketplace, we have to learn to work together. We have to learn to collaborate, you know. So it, it's time for us to be able to decipher and see our company and who God has called us to work with. So those are the few, the things I'm allowed to share. Thank you very much, Sandra, for sharing. Yeah. Really appreciate that. Um, there's a lot of meat in that, so I hope people will get the opportunity to meditate on that and to to just spend time with it. You know, I, I know a couple of things are being shared and um, Dr. Carlton is also going to share what the Lord has been pressing on his heart. Um, <clears throat> Konyisola, Charlia and um, Pastor Relly also shared um, what they felt the Lord was telling them and now we've had Sandra add to that. And, you know, just to really drive home that point, the reason why we're having all of these is to give people the opportunity to have a fuller picture, right? So whatever the Lord is telling you, we encourage everyone listening, we encourage everyone that is part of our community to spend time with the Lord, to hear what the Lord is saying to them, right? Everything comes together. God gives somebody a bit, you get more from others, and it could be an element that you got that you're not sure about. God will clarify through what he's saying to somebody else. So we really encourage everyone in the community to take this material and go to the Lord yourself. No one is being a law unto you. You've got the Spirit of God who can te who teaches all things, right? Who will teach you all things as much as you allow him to. So, okay, um, now Shay is going to also share what she feels the Lord has been dropping in her heart. Shay, over to you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Daniel. Um, thank you, Sandra, for sharing. <laughs> <laughs> I sort of just gave clarity to my notes because I wasn't just very sure of a lot of things. So then there are just like three major points and I'll be as brief as possible. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, number one will be that we would operate or we should or we would operate from the place of intimacy and fellowship. I mean, I think it's in line with what you said and what Kainsela said. Um, it's not going to roll out the plan for us, like A to Z, is as we um, walk with him, fellowship with him, that we're going to know the very next thing that um, we are supposed to do. So the place of fellowship is very important because um, I feel like instructions will come in the ways that we, we are not familiar with. So if we don't... Um, if we're looking to hearing special, a special voice when it's time to really make a decision, if we don't practice fellowship, we might be confused. Mm -hmm. So intimacy is key. Fellowship is um, very important. And the scripture that really dropped in my mind is uh, 
while I was listening to this, is um, Isaiah 30, 15. It said, this is what the sovereign Lord, the Holy One of Israel says, only in returning to me and resting in me will you be saved. In quietness and in confidence is your strength. But, in, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, um, so that is where, um, and I will just quickly read from my notes. Oppression will be from the place of fellowship. It won't give out plans completely. You will get it as the journey unfolds. So it's important that we are in sync with the Lord and to know, I mean, um, the scripture that also comes to mind is the fact that we have the mind of Christ. So as we fellowship and meditate on what the Lord is saying, the word of God, we're able to make decisions and we're confident in the fact that, okay, this is the Lord. Yeah. And the second thing also ties in with what um, Sandra said last. Leaning into the brethren as much as leaning onto God. Um, so much is not going to get done in the place of isolation. There is going to be a lot of need for partnership. Um, we're going to have to partner. There is no, is my business, so is your business. We have to do a lot of coming together. So if the Lord is laying in your mind to speak to somebody, it's okay. And then we have to also understand that whatever the Lord is asking us to do, um, and whatever response we're being um, given, it's we're just saying yes to the Lord. Is I mean, I think that will help us with competition. You're responding to the Lord. You're, um, it doesn't have to carry our name. It just has to have God written all over it. Because I feel like competition, that's like the major thing about competition. We want it to be all about <laughs> us. So speak to who the Lord would have you speak to. Collaborate with who the Lord would have you collaborate. Because the Bible says that one should chase 1,000. Two should chase 10,000. So there is um, strength in numbers. So, and then the third one, so it says, be open to experiencing God differently because God is about to flip the script on you. Mm -hmm. so God is about to flip the script on you. So how the Lord um, operates with you or operates um, or dealt with you in the past years might not be the way that he is going to deal with us in 2023 and um, the years ahead of 2023. So we should be open to new interpretation of the scripture, new revelation of the scripture. Um, let the Lord show you what he's saying per time about somebody, um, we should try not to um, look at somebody from the place of yesterday or yesteryears. Let the Lord um, give you fresh lenses. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much, um, Shoyu. Um, thank you, thank you. Again, I can see that there's some sort of pattern, there's stuff collaborating, um, you're corroborating things she's getting and the things that have been said earlier on. So yeah, so like we said, this is the purpose of what we're doing. Um, it's just to make sure that pieces are tied together. She started off by saying some of the things Sandra said help bring clarity to some of the things she was getting. And that's the purpose of us getting this fuller picture of as many people as possible. Just a few of us were able to, were available for this, to share what we felt the Lord was saying into 2023 from our own perspective and generally speaking. So um, I'll just share what it is I'm getting. I'll just jump straight into it, um, as always. Um, just a few things I wanted to mention. The first thing is um, 2023 will be faster than 2022 at an unprecedented rate. And that's something that I felt when I was told about this, oh, it was a lot of things, I'm like, lots of things, not saying anything to me. I'm just trying to finish the year. I have so much work, deadlines to go through. But then, as always, the moment I say, oh, I don't know, then the Lord says, speaking to me, and instead, just bringing back some of the things that said to me. So one of the things that was said is, 2023 will be faster than 2022. 
at an unprecedented rate. If you think 2022 was fast, 2023 is going to be even faster. Um, and said, and the Lord also said to me why this would be so. He said, this acceleration is tied to the manifestation of the plans of the Lord and the attempted interventions of the enemy. So the Lord is unfolding his plans and also the enemy is also going to try to intervene. So the reason for the, for the acceleration and the speed is because the Lord is going to need to get things done because the enemy is going to try to, to intervene. Which, in a way, for me, supports what Sandra was saying, what Consola was saying, what Shay was saying, that, you know, the need for intimacy and fellowship, you know, to be led by his hands um, for the collaboration is because there are things that the Lord is going to have to execute speedily that if the, what, those that he's speaking to, if they're not also matching his speed. When I say matching his speed, you can't match Lord's speed, but is when he gives an instruction, you obey swiftly. Um, it's there, there, there's just so much that is tied to manifestations in 2023 and the speed at which things are going to unfold. The next thing is, in 2023, we will have the capacity to build what we have allowed the Lord to build within us up to this point. Um, what will be built going forward will be directly linked to what he has built within each of us as mature sons of God his government, that is his ecclesia, and his connected and engaged body. And for me, this is just, it's just building on what everyone has said, that God is going to be doing things in 2023, but he's going to align it with what you've allowed him to do within you leading up to this point. You know, So make no mistake about it. It's not just going to be, God is not just going to do things in isolation. It's not just going to be random things, you know. Um, I hear brethren and our brethren and the body across the world praying for specific things. And I'm like, yes, I understand why you're doing that. But the manifestation the Lord is, is, is doing across regions and in different regions is going to be tied to what you've allowed him to do within you. You know, you cannot wield authority over something that is not linked to what the Lord has been manifesting in you. Um, scriptures that kind of support that. Um, include um, just the story of Moses, you know, after Moses discovered what he felt God's plan was with his life and with the nation, he tried to act and we know what happened. He went into seclusion for 40 years, but in those 40 years, the Lord began to mold him and shape him. So by the time the Lord was ready to act, he brought Moses um, to the forefront and we all know the story. We're not gonna, I'm not going to go into the story. For those who are interested, you know, have a look at Exodus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. <laughs> <laughs> so Exodus chapter 1 to 8, you know, just, the, <laughs> just, just that whole point, you know, Moses had to go through that process, you know. What God did, you know, and, and, and just to drive home that point, there's a particular scripture that God used to define Moses as Moses was coming up with the excuses um, oh, I can't speak. He said, somebody's coming. He said, da, 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 da. He's like, sorry, there's that. But then he said, he says, you will be like God unto Pharaoh. And for me, that is one of the first times we see the mention of something that resembles sons of God, right? Um, he was going to be like God. That is what a mature son of God is being transformed into, according to Romans 8, right, um, according to Corinthians, is that was the first inclination, that the plan that God was about to unfold on the earth to create a nation through a bunch of slaves was tied to a mature son being obedient to him. Um, we see the same thing with Joshua. Joshua spent a lot of time in the presence of God. When it was time for God to pick a successor to Moses, guess who he picked? He picked a military guy that used to hang out in his presence, you know. So, you know, links to what Shea said, what Sandra was saying, you can't, you can't separate it. God is not just going to do this magical miracle isolated from your relationship with him. That, that's that's um, manipulation, a.k.a. witchcraft. <laughs> but, you know, there's also John the Baptist, or uh, Prophet John the Baptizer, as I've been corrected many a times. Um, just his own process, you know, same thing, what God had built in him. He says, until the time of the word came that released him from the wilderness. The Lord was preparing Prophet John the baptizer in the wilderness until the word came to him and then he was activated to become the forerunner. You know, it is always linked. So what God was going to do the, in the earth in bringing Jesus, he required a son of God. Same principle, same concept, repeated Old Covenant in the Old Testament and also in the New Testament. And of course, there's Jesus too. And so the next point is, um, his grace will only aid in manifesting what we've allowed him to build within us up until now. So now, is this just following up on the other point, right? 
And I know everyone likes, oh, by his grace, oh, in his grace, oh, Jesus' name. You know, I'm not even going to talk about the whole mercy thing. You know, that's just going to get me started, but we'll leave that for now. But you see, the grace is there. We all know that. But the grace will only assist and aid in relation to what you've allowed God to build within you. So the grace to manifest, the grace to build is linked to what you've allowed God to build. The grace will not aid in manifesting and building what you've not allowed God to build within you. It's not, it's not going to happen. You, you, no matter how many times you pray it, what have you allowed God to build in you, the grace would manifest that outwardly. Um, and so that's what that point is. Um, the other, and continuing from that, there's a dimension of what he has been building through us that are the tools and elements that would aid what the Holy Spirit wants to build in the physical through us. Um, and that's just continuing with the grace. So the grace of God available will take those things we've allowed God to build within us. Some of them will turn to tools and some of them will be elements that he would use to build what he wants to build in the nation. If you use Nigeria as an example, everybody wants change in Nigeria. I'm like, yeah, hoo-ha, right? But then I ask, what's God telling you? And I hear people stutter, stutter, you know. But the truth is, you know, all these things are tight. There are no isolations, you know. God doesn't do things in a vacuum. Um, he never has and he, and he never will. So what the Lord is building in this forthcoming time frame will be based on blueprints he has been downloading into the hearts of the maturing sons of God. Um, so then again, we have the grace is going to work within a framework. The great grace of God is not going to work outside of a framework. It doesn't, it doesn't happen. There are principles that God has put. So the framework for what God wants to build in 2023 going forward, he's encoded it in blueprints and strategies that need to be received. And the grace would work in line with that. Um, just this afternoon, earlier on, I was talking to... Um, Dr. Carlton and we're talking about a bunch of things and suddenly, not long after he called me, he's like, oh, Daniel, come. And what we spoke about, somebody just called us from a bunch of other countries, exactly what, and he's like, Daniel, can you imagine, we're just talking about this and they've called regarding this, you know. So, you know, I, I'm using it as an example and I know many people think, oh yeah, that's just a, that happens. Yes, it happens a lot, but do you understand why it's happening? Do you get the insight? When you're in that place of obedience and the Lord is moving and you're obeying and he's manifesting stuff, the grace will aid the obedience that you're engaging in and the things that are resulting, the results of that obedience to build what he wants to build. A good example is Jesus and the 12 disciples, quickly, right? Jesus had to build, John 17 is just a lovely scripture. It says that Jesus said, I finished the work that my father gave me. Those that you sent to me, um, I did not lose any. I've given them the word, the spirit of truth. I can't remember the exact scripture of hand now, but Jesus was saying he had done the work in building the people and, you know, because many people think, oh, Jesus came to redeem us. But in John 17, he's talking to his father and he says, I've done the work you asked me to do. And the reason why that is important is the crucifixion and the resurrection and the ascension of Christ Jesus was bringing in a new covenant, right? Mm -hmm. But that new covenant needed to rest on certain things. Mm -hmm. You understand? So the grace of the new covenant needed to rest on certain things. Mm -hmm. And for that to happen, guess what? The Lord had to prepare some vessels that it would rest on. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit of God was not just going to randomly just appear on random people. No. Mm -hmm. The people in the upper room were people who had been prepared, who were obedient to the message to wait mm -hmm. that the Spirit of God entered, descended upon and entered. It was not random folks in Joppa. It, that's not what happened or in Caesar. So, you know, these are just examples of how these things are scripturally based and how it is going to unfold going forward. So, um, just to end, I have a question. And it's a question I want to leave with all of us. It's not a question we're going to talk about now. It's just a question to aid us as we're thinking. It's just, what has the Lord been building within you? You know, as we come to the end of this year, I encourage everyone to just spend some time with the Holy Spirit, to spend some time with the Lord and just take stock, right? You know, take stock, you know. What has the Lord been building within you? You know, you must be able to answer that because these will serve as signposts for you to see and gain insight onto how the Lord is going to do things in, in the coming year. So, converge your focus on the things that the Lord has been building within you. These signposts, <clears throat> these signposts will aid as he builds through you in 2023. So I hope that was helpful. I hope people will go through this, all the stuff that has been shared. Please spend a lot of time on it. Um, we're not just trying to give words to just sound 
flashy and like we know it all. It's just to help equip and to build um, everyone in the community and everyone who needs to hear this to let them know that what they need to do and how they need to align themselves with what the Lord is doing. Thank you very much for your time and I wish you a fantastic 2023. Thank you. Bye. Well, good evening and um, Happy New Year in advance. You know, in 2 Chronicles 2020, uh, King Jehoshaphat authored these inspired words. He said, Believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. Believe his prophets and you shall prosper. You know, while we always have the infallible inerrant holy scriptures as a safe guide for our lives the lord has always given his people prophetic revelation to provide specific direction uh, and focus on his emphasis concerning each season of our lives our ministries our nation and our world just like in the old testament we also have new testament prophets you know, Paul, the apostle, speaking to the Ephesians and Corinthians, said, uh, first of the Ephesians in Ephesians 4, he said, And he, speaking about the Lord, has appointed some with the grace to be apostles, some with the grace to be prophets, some with the grace to be evangelists, some with the grace to be pastors, some with the grace to be teachers. And their calling is to nurture and prepare all the holy believers to do their own works of ministry as they do this and will enlarge and build the body of Christ. To the Corinthians, Paul said in 1 Corinthians 12, he said, God has placed in the church the following, first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, uh, then those with gifts of miracles, gifts of divine healing, gifts of revelation knowledge, gifts of leadership, and gifts of different kinds of tongues. So we see that there are clearly New Testament prophets and prophetic ministries. In fact, one of the fundamental differences between the Old and the New Testament operations of the Holy Spirit is the number of people through whom he would give prophetic revelation. In the Old Testament, all prophetic revelation was restricted to the prophet's ministry. A few specific individuals in each generation called and appointed for this purpose. While in the New Testament, the scope of prophetic revelation has been expanded by the Lord to all flesh. In Joel 2, 28 and 29, the Bible says, It shall come to pass afterward that I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. So the evidence of the manifestation of the spirit in the New Testament through all flesh would be prophetic revelation through visions, dreams, and prophecy to all. Now, this is not to suggest that the ministry of the prophet is equivalent to the general manifestation of the prophetic through the body. That would be like comparing a stream with an ocean. Uh, with the prophetic ministry, it varies in depth and scope. So all are called to prophesy, which is an element of prophetic revelation, but everyone is not called to be a prophet. However, the fact remains that now we are a prophetic generation and the Lord is leading you and I through the scriptures, but also he gives us specific insight of the Holy Spirit concerning things to come and now more so than ever before. Now, unlike the scriptures, prophets are not infallible and therefore all prophecy must be judged by other prophets and also against the standard of the scriptures. In addition to the revelation given by God, every prophetic revelation also has an interpretation, an application, um, and proclamation. 
So even well-meaning prophets who may be accurate in recounting um, the revelation they have received from the Lord may actually be inaccurate in their interpretation of that revelation or in their application or how it should or should not be proclaimed. Okay, so it's incumbent on the prophet to wait on the Lord for an accurate interpretation, application, and proclamation as much as he or she does on the core revelation itself. Also, it's important to understand that prophets see in part. You know, the Bible in 1 Corinthians 2 verse 10 says, The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God, and reveals those things to us. But the us in that verse speaks about the whole body of Christ and not an individual. He does not reveal everything to one individual. We will each receive a part of that complete revelation and therefore must humbly present and compare each of our parts with others before we can see the complete picture of what the Lord is showing us. And I believe that part of the reason for this is because the Lord wants us as his body to function as one. No one does the body of Christ make. Lastly, prophets also have a scope of authority. This is both a function of their development of their prophetic ministry, but also a function of their calling. While all prophets receive revelation from the Lord, some will cast a vision for a community, others a city or geographical area. But, but then we also have what Joseph Shrewsbury in his book, The Cave, identifies as stage five prophets. These are transcultural prophets. Uh, he says these prophets operate with a scope that's beyond geography and that impacts multiple cultural spheres of influence. A stage five prophet speaks transformational words into any situation regardless of locality. To clarify, a stage four prophet may have authority in his church um, but not in another or he may have prophetic clarity concerning a certain city, but not another. Uh, contrastingly, a stage five prophet pretty much has authority anywhere he or she goes, okay? So there are scopes of prophetic um, authority. Now, I am not a prophet. However, um, I do have an apostolic call. And apostles are sent to establish structures on the earth that heaven has appointed. Uh, particularly at transitional points in the revelation of God to man and the unveiling of his purpose. Apostles are therefore forerunners and typically start and establish things before they become a trend. Um, those who come after or who follow apostles tend to do better. Apostles pave the way, but those that follow can build faster based on the foundation they have laid. Noah, for instance, was an apostle. In fact, he's the first apostle recorded in scripture. He built a structure for the time that none had seen before. Paul was an apostle, establishing the in Christ structure of the church that very few people understood and no one had a revelation of. So as a result of the forerunner nature of apostolic ministry, the apostle must have a strong prophetic element in the operation. Otherwise, how can you establish the new unless you have been shown the new? Uh, apostles uh, typically work closely with prophets. To establish structures, the apostle must also be able to um, uh, teach the word and pastor, but they will never be as effective as somebody that has a core pastoral ministry or one that has been called purely to a teaching ministry. As I speak about what the Lord has shown me concerning 2023, I am conscious that these prophetic revelations are within the scope of my apostolic mandate. My mandate is geographical in scope 
And therefore, these words have general application in the sense of what the Lord is doing and building in the earth, but with specific emphasis on the area of my assignment. Now, before I go into the word of the Lord uh, for 2023 that he has given me, I, would, I should mention briefly how the Lord revealed this to me. You know, the Lord has given me revelations in time past, in visions and dreams. He has, even on occasion, visited with me and shared things of a personal nature uh, concerning what he's building. But by far the most common mode of direction that I've received from him has been an internal vision, a growing picture that forms in my spirit that takes a clear form, accompanied with an unction and witness as to its truth. So I submit this word to the body of Christ. You know, in 2022, um, I believe the Lord ministered to me that it was the year of the kingdom builders. The way I interpreted that phrase was actually not the way the Lord intended, um, and, and now I understand that, because I thought it meant that we would be building external structures, but his emphasis was not on the structures, but was on the builder. It was the year of the kingdom builder not the things they would build. Uh, and having lived through 2022, I can attest that it was the year of the kingdom builder where he will be focusing on reconstructing the internal framework um, of our hearts and of the hearts through whom he will birth kingdom structures in the days ahead. There was an emphasis in 2022 on practical faith and on engaging the kingdom of God to draw substance from another realm, how to plug into peace, joy, strength, courage, and wisdom from above. There was a growth of tenacity of faith and resolution that I saw grow in many in 2022. We moved away from structures that we're familiar with and we were willing to dare to follow a different course that would be clearer as we continued to follow the Lord's revelations. We have become, as a result of 2022, more willing to step out of the boat of comfort and follow a voice um, that others we know and love may not hear or may not be ready to respond to. We have accepted that some must be willing to walk on water first and stumble forward so that others may be able to see and learn and function better and even operate much better. But some have to go first and we've been willing to accept that responsibility. Now, I believe that what he did internally in 2022 will bear fruit externally in 2023. The fruit of obedience in 2022 will result in grace to build in 2023. As the Lord continues to build internally, strengthening and fortifying his kingdom values and structures within us, we will see these take form in external structures in the year ahead. 2023 is the year of grace to build. The year of grace to build. 2023 will be a year of migration. As the animals of old in the days of Noah moved two by two into the ark, hearts the Lord has fortified as one will begin to move away from fragmented connections to form communities with closer proximity like the Clapham sect of old. Some will take over estates in the city. Others will migrate far away from city centers to build their Goshen. But each will form a community of life 
that is centered around fellowship, discipleship, and purpose. There will be agricultural communities, mining communities, tech communities. They will all hear the sound of the Spirit, and the yoke of fragmentation will be broken. And the phrase, all for one and one for all, will once again be heard in the land. I see stronger communities forming across the continent of Africa. Identity that transcends national borders will be forged. As blood brothers lock arms, an individual nationality gives way to kingdom brotherhood. I see economic frameworks being set up that will serve kingdom interests that will begin to break the stranglehold of the spirit of poverty and mammon across the continent. In the agricultural sector, I see seed banks being formed to preserve seeds um, and stem the tide of a rising movement to proliferate seed ownership as a private enterprise instead of part of our God-given commonwealth. I believe this move will spill over into off-grid solutions for water, power, and renewable energy sources. As the enemy overplays his hand of control and more and more people see his plan and separate from his grip. I see the church rising and embracing the truth that every aspect of culture belongs to the king. There will be a fight. There will be a tussle. The enemy will rage and he will roar. But the remnant church will refuse to back down and they will enforce the mandate that was given to them by the Lord and they will overcome. You know, in Isaiah 11 verse 1, the Passion Translation puts it this way. It says, the cut off stump of Jesse will sprout and a fruitful branch will grow from his roots. There is a sprouting and a fruitfulness that will arise from the stump in 2023. Out of the church that has been seen as non-essential and has become a stone rejected by the builder, the rising ecclesia will take form in culture. This remnant will walk in prophetic sight they will walk in extraordinary wisdom. They will walk in perfect understanding. They will walk in wise strategy, mighty power, revelation, and the fear of the Lord. They will be entrusted by the king with wealth and rule. There will be a manifestation of the grace of God in the area of acquisition of property of land rights being handed over to the people of God, of hidden wealth being revealed, as it was in the days of Pharaoh and in the days of Egypt, when through the mighty hand of God he delivered his people and gave, and gave favor to the children of Israel, and their captors handed over great wealth to them. I see a transfer through the grace of God into the hands of, um, of, of, um, of the remnant church that will be custodians of wealth and rule. The new mystics will walk the earth in 2023. This is a year and it is a day that I believe that men will become kings as they enter into the realization that they are kings and assume the responsibility of a king and lay hold of all the Father has given them to rule. You know, in Romans 8 verse 19, 
The Bible says that the entire universe is standing on tiptoe, yearning to see the unveiling of glorious of God's glorious sons and daughters. I believe that the Lord presents this opportunity to participate as the unveiled church in 2023. Welcome to 2023, the year of grace to build. Happy New Year, everyone. Let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father, we say amen. Uh, we say amen. Lord, we, we step out of the boat of comfort. We hear your voice and we respond. We move forward in strength and courage. We do not look at the signs on the outside. We, we tune into the sound and the frequency of your voice. Lord, we love and leave those that are not ready to respond to this new sound. In love and for the sake of our brethren, we advance. Lord, we embrace the grace to build. A grace that is not based on earthly qualification, but the day, the time, the season, and the favor of the Lord upon us. We move forward. We take territory. We accept what you have given us. We move in strength and courage. Uh, we refuse to be discouraged or afraid because the Lord our God is with us wherever we go. We thank you for our community. We thank you for our families. We thank you for the communities that you are leading us into. Even within this community, we thank you, O oh God, that you are leading people in different directions. We lock arms together and we build and establish that which you have, uh, that which you have purposed. Lord, we thank you because it is a bright new day. We thank you because you lead us from strength to strength and glory to glory. We rejoice in you for the year of grace to build in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you and Happy New Year! High life, we advance.